occur to the ocean and its preservation help us shake off our century-long addiction to oil? Could blue be the new black? New materials and technologies are bringing Europe's blue economy sectors closer to this goal. Here in Mutriku, northern Spain, scientists from the ASTI Research Centre work on a European project that aims to replace plastics used in aquaculture with something more environmentally friendly. Local entrepreneur Emmanuel Guruchaga runs an open water mussel farm. This research platform illustrates the usual production method. Mussels are grown on long ropes suspended underwater. The mesh protects them from predators. The ropes and the mesh are made of plastic. And when they are no longer of use, they become a problem. All aquaculture generates some plastic residue, whether it's the production of salmon or sea bream. In our case, we use these ropes to grow mussels. There are many ropes, and many ropes create a lot of waste. Local authorities are increasingly pressing for change. They are already asking us to do all our ecological production with biodegradable ropes within a year or two. To find a solution, researchers working in the European project BioGears have developed compostable aquaculture ropes. This is the first prototype we developed in BioGears. It contains bioplastic materials of natural origin. That makes them biodegradable. Production made using these ropes can be more sustainable, more environmentally friendly and can provide added value to the sector. Instead of petrochemicals and fossil fuels, scientists have made compostable plastics from natural components derived from renewable biomass, like plant-produced sugars. Their experiments with various recipes have resulted in a collection of potential rope materials. The goal is to find plastics that won't decompose at sea, but will turn into compost when they are no longer of use. Plastics are not just oil. They contain other types of components that can be natural. They have small types of additives that can be organic. All that can be part of the composition of plastic. But can the industry use this biomaterial on existing production lines? A few kilometers away, this factory, also participating in the project, produces three to four tons of rope every day mostly for fisheries and aquaculture. Its machines are meant to work with traditional plastic pellets, but the managers say producing compostable rope prototypes required only minimal adjustments, and the results seem to be as strong as the usual plastic gear. The main challenge is to determine the right components to ensure the supply of the necessary quantities of these components for industrial scale production and to keep costs competitive. The compostable ropes will now be tested on mussel farms. But can we do anything about fishing nets, one of the main sources of plastic pollution in the ocean? It's estimated that around 640,000 tonnes of fishing equipment are lost or abandoned in oceans every year. Ghost nets take centuries to degrade, trapping marine animals, polluting the water with microplastics and increasing navigational risks. This trawler about to leave the port of Vigo in Galicia carries around 20 tonnes of plastic nets. During its long fishing journeys in the Atlantic, bad storms or sharp rocks can tear off pieces of this expensive gear, or even, in rare cases, claim an entire net. Researchers from another European project, OceanNets, 
have made a web-based tool for skippers to log lost gear publicly. Thanks to this tool, if someone encounters a problem, they can flag it so that others know that in the area, at a certain depth, at certain coordinates, there is an obstacle that can break their nets or even cause them to be completely lost. Fishermen constantly repair their nets, cutting away damaged sections. These cuttings can be used as raw material for new products, reducing the need for newly extracted oil. In an average week, the Port of Vigo collects a whole container of cuttings. One of the goals of the Ocean Nets project is to show the business value of such recycling. This is not waste because polyamide, like polyethylene, like polyester, are fibers that can be recycled. And there's growing market demand for recycled products because they have value. Some of the cuttings collected at the port of Vigo are shipped across Spain to Valencia for research experiments. The AIM Plus Technology Center specializes in plastic innovations. Its aim is to solve associated environmental challenges and add value to companies working in this sector. Together with other partners in the Oceanets project, researchers have developed mechanical and chemical ways to recycle old nets. In this example, pieces of nets are shredded into tiny fibers that are then melted together. This process, known as compounding, produces plastic granules that can be used to make yarn for synthetic textiles. As an example, the project recycled some fishing nets into fashionable sportswear. Both the quality and the finish of the final product are quite good, so we think that in the future such items made from recycled polyamide will reach stores across Spain and across Europe. As extra sustainability will attract more customers, researchers suggest certifying its origin with a special tracing additive. It makes recycled granules and fabrics shine green under specific light, unlike non-recycled plastics. This adds value. It allows you to tell the recycled material from newly produced polyamide. It also protects the brand, helping to detect possible counterfeits or black market competition. From recycling existing plastics to embracing biodegradable alternatives, marine industries are paving the way to a future that relies less on oil. A future where the oceans are cleaner and healthier. <laughs>